Well, welcome to this video series. Um, I've been asked many times, hey Mike, can you show us how you make your laser buildings? Um, and I've been a little reluctant mainly because I'm not an expert and I'm trying to figure it out myself. But it's been two years and I've got a few tricks and tips that I do use. Now, I am here to tell you that I am not a laser kit manufacturer. So I, this is not about how you would uh, go about manufacturing a, a, a kit for uh, to sell. Um, this is basically scratch building using a laser. Many of the things that I do would not apply to manufacturing at all. For instance, my brick texture takes, you know, just to shoot the texture might take, you know, six, seven hours. So as a manufacturer, that's not practical. But as a one-off builder, works fine for me. So that's what I do. And I like the results of it. I use different softwares and I'm not here to promote those softwares. Uh, I happen to use Corel mostly, not because I don't like Adobe. I used Adobe for years, but it just became ridiculously expensive and as a hobbyist, it just wasn't practical. So I switched to Corel. But there's other products out there. There's Fusion 360 and Inkscape. Both of those are free and you can certainly use those as well. If you want to learn how to build a laser, I'm not going to show you how to do that either because that's not what this is about. This is about just building a kit and one guy's idea of how to do it. I'm going to break it up into different parts. The first part is going to be the research and the computer work. Um, so if you skip the first part of the series, don't feel bad about it because, you know, maybe you already know how to do it or you find it boring. I'm sorry, but if you want to know how I go about it and what, what I, steps I take, he might help you out. I'm trying to condense them and keep them simple. So if there's questions that you may have in the process, feel free to leave uh, a message on the comments below. In any case, I'm going to try and go through this process, show you what it's going to take. Now I understand, for me to do this, to go from beginning where I decide I'm going to build a building and I've kind of looked at the layout of how much space I have to finding the building that I'm going to build and to actually get to the final step where it's actually built. Sometimes it takes me a couple months to go through this process as in two, three months. We're coming in the middle of a build that I'm working on right now, the Colorado Saddle Company. I've got some videos that I've been shooting through the process and I'm going to use those videos, but we're going to flip back and forth because it really doesn't matter if I'm building a house or if I'm building this building, a lot of the steps are the same way. So if you want to see a step by step on how I build a particular building, that's not what this video is about. The video is about how you can use the laser to scratch build your own kits and models. With that in mind, come on in and let's take a look at what's going on. Well, welcome to the part of the layout you probably haven't seen in a while, and that's Denver. Um, and as you can see, uh, Union Station is way back there. You might be able to catch it over the back of my shoulder. Um, and Longmont is over on this side. On the other side, it's in the middle peninsula here. Right straight across from me here is the oil refinery. And um, again, none of this is built. It's only drawn out in a plan. But the reason why we're stopping here at the layout first is because when planning a new laser kit or building a new laser project, I need to know how much space I have. Now, as you can see, I have boxes up here of some lasers uh, manufacturer kits that I'm going to actually be building and putting on the layout because they're going to be generic fill-ins for the buildings. I'm not doing research for every single building, but I am putting some key buildings on there so that if someone came from Denver, they would actually recognize it as, wow, that's Denver, you know. So that's kind of what, what the goal is here. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be a person who's going to nitpick every little thing that's in here. As a matter of fact, to be absolutely honest with you, um, I actually mirrored Denver. Um, so this is going to be the 15th Street Viaduct instead of the 6th Street Viaduct because it's the way I want it to fit onto the layout. It doesn't matter. 
for most people they won't even know if it's the north or south end but it just gives the image still of creating this is Denver and if somebody walked in that was from Denver they'd be able to recognize it so this this uh, manufacturer's kit which is um, imagine that it's it's actually going to go down farther but it's holding a place right now of where I'm going to point the Colorado Saddle Company and as I measured this out I'm, I'm going to put the viaduct into here and the building into here. Now the viaduct is four lanes, two lanes going in each direction and a center lane. So it's pretty wide. So it's not a narrow road. But I have in this area here approximately 19 to 20 inches. Now I can scoot it down a little farther and I could probably get into 22, 23 inches. So I'm proportionally looking at this saying okay my road is going to be between six and a half and seven inches long and my building is going to be about 15 inches long so that's going to make it about 21 to 22 inches total the other thing is I'm going to want to put a roadway in front of here so that I can actually have my loading dock and everything I want on there so given that situation one of the things I'm going to really make sure is that when I'm measuring my distance coming out to the track that I've got 12 inches to the track well, actually 12 and a half inches to the track and I'm going to take about four inches back so I've got between six and eight inches to build my building out so the building is going to be six to eight inches wide and the key to that is that what I want to do is I want to build the building at least eight inches wide I can always cut it off and make it shorter to fit into my needs. It's really hard to add to a building after the fact. So I'm going to want to build my building about eight inches wide. And I'm going to want it about 15 inches wide to 15 and a half inches, depending on how I begin to scale the building down. So that being the case, my footprint that I'm basically working with is going to be eight by 15. Now I can shorten that up if I need to. But that's basically what I'm working from. So now given that piece of information, it's time to do a little research. So let's head in and take a look at the computer. Okay, welcome to my computer. So we're gonna kinda go through some, some basic things to understand as we begin to do this. Um, we'll start with just the research. So the research that I do is basically something that anyone could do any day of the week. So we're going to start with Google Maps. Google Maps is probably your friend. And this is Denver right here. And literally, there is so much information you can gather from Google. In this case here, uh, we're going to take a look at a particular building. But to give you an idea of where we're working on, so this is Union Station right here. And I'm just going to drop a figure here just so you can see uh, Union Station. And of course, we got to flip around here. And there is Union Station in all its glory. Now, this has dramatically changed, even from the last time I was there and took photographs. Uh, a lot of the buildings, matter of fact, this building on this end here wasn't there. This was all parking lot and drive up, which is nowhere near what it looks like today. It's amazing. Uh, this was all parking lot over here. And this building right here didn't exist. This ice house that you see way back there, that was what was there. So this has dramatically changed since uh, the last time I was there and took some photographs. And as we pull back out of this here, um, the rails have all been changed because this used to all be uh, tracks for building some rails. You can see they're already building some buildings back in here. And this is the new Denver Union Station for the light rail. So it has dramatically changed from when the last time I was there. Um, all these buildings that you're seeing right through here, all of this, this is replaced you, uh, Rice Yard. And you can see evidence of Rice Yard right here at the river. These are the bridges that used to cross through here that went into Union Station and to the different areas here that are no longer here. They're now footpaths, but nonetheless, they were there. And that has drastically changed. 
I can't I, I can find maps of it but I can't get everything I want but part of what I'm dealing with is right over here this is Union Station uh, across the street from this this used to be and I'm not sure if it's this building here which I believe is the building that it should be this used to be the post office and this is an all brand new set of buildings that was uh, placed into here this is and, and that is by the way uh, 16th Street and this is 15th Street down here and this happens to be the building that we're interested in right here and I'm going to drop this right there and that is the Denver Saddle Company so and that's this building right here so when I was doing research for this project one of the key things that I wanted to do was I wanted to start with a building that was um, fairly simple to build um, now this building has this building has been modernized you can see that from on top because I can show you some old photographs and we'll show you those here in just a minute um, this is not what the top of this building looked like at all uh, matter of fact there used to be a water tower sitting here but nonetheless um, this just gives us a really nice image of what it looks like today and why people might recognize it so once I start researching I actually decide what the building is I'm looking for uh, let's take a pause here and go back here and one of the things I do is I begin to go through images um, I am a huge fan of Google and you can see here I've typed in Seattle I excuse me uh, Colorado Saddle Company and I put in building history images and I begin to go through this process and these are images of older buildings and it's really kind of nice because as you go through these buildings uh, some of them are not the building I'm looking for some of them aren't even in Denver or Colorado but it's helpful to at least have you know to start the process of going through a search but one of the as we go through here one of the images that are in here which happens to be an image I had already captured. Um, do, 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 do. I'm hoping I can find it again. Well, there you go. See, you can't you can't find it when you want it, even when you're doing videos. But nonetheless, I start by googling and finding images. This is the ice house that I just showed you just not too long ago. Ah, there it is. This is what I'm looking for. This is the Colorado saddle company shortly after it's been built there's not even signs on it there's nothing on here but it is a great image to begin our process of building and I actually begin saving and accumulating these images and I then put them on my computer and I keep a folder of a building I'm interested in so I start with the I'll, I'll keep a folder I have a folder labeled Denver and then um, I'll then put it on there a, in that Denver folder will be one that says Colorado Saddle Company and I will begin the process of searching for images I will go through library archives I will go through um, the Congress of Library for images that I can find anything that'll give me an image of the building that I'm looking for or any piece of data I can find uh, this is really was really a nice key photograph because this is the side I want to model this is the other side and then the opposite side is against the building um, on, on here I can see the 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 um, windows here the big windows that would be the sales windows that are on here this is the loading dock down here there are three doors another window and a door uh, when I drew my drawing and it, it's gonna have to be changed but you'll see here that I've got the images switched and a part of that is is that I can actually go back to the Google and I can take a look this happens to be the side that we're looking at there's the doors the windows and these well this is the loading dock right here now it's been dramatically changed but these are the three loading dock doors and if you go down here and then here's the window go to the middle of the intersection and make a turn here there's the two windows and all that's here I want you to notice something here in this particular image you can see down the street going that direction and down the street going this direction and there is something that is missing that was there as late as the 1980s uh, that's not there today and that's where we're going to begin to pick up some of the um, 
of, of what I do. So when I begin to build a building, I collect some images that are very helpful. In particular, these images right here, and this image is from 1985, and this is really interesting. This still shows the viaduct that was there. So this viaduct actually ran up and over Rice Yard, and that was the reason for it being there. When they took out Rice Yard, they took out the viaduct in the 80s. So these images here are from the 80s. This particular uh, photograph is not necessarily of the Colorado Saddle Company, but it does give me an image of underneath the viaduct so that when I go to work with the project, I have this image and I understand how the viaduct interacts with the buildings. This image here was before they started the, um, actually it appears to be right in the middle of them revamping this, this whole building. You see it's, it was all boarded up and everything else. But it's a great image because it gives me an image of what a lot of what the building looked like. The other thing is the viaduct is gone. So I can tell you right now from the beginning that this photograph was taken sometime after 1982 and before what it looks like today. Again, the image of it when it was originally built, and then I have an image of the, the um, sign that I can use to uh, create my new sign that will go on the side of this building. But as I look at some of these other signs, this see Colorado Saddle Company, there is what, I'm, what I was talking about, that there was a big water tower up on top of that. Notice the way that this building is built, and there is nothing else on top of here. So from the image from Google, we can see that this portion right here was in existence and there was a water tower here, but much of this may or may not be there. And from the looks of the image from uh, the original image that we had, it does not appear that that is the case. This is again, this brick and this all right here is all that same area. But you can see in the beginning it didn't have the water tower and I'm sure that the water tower came in later on. So that's what I'm dealing with and that's how I begin the research. And I may only end up with, as you can see, five decent photographs to work with. But that's enough to get started on drawing the building. The next thing I have to do is I have to decide how big this building is. Now, there's a lot of ways to go about this. I happen to like the old-fashioned method of simply standing over top of this thing and going down and finding something that I can tell exactly what the size is. And voila, that would be railroad tracks. Now, I want to get close enough to the railroad tracks like this before I switch down to the roadside view. And here's my building right here. So what I'm going to do without zooming in anymore is I'm going to go to here I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to put it on the screen. Now the reason why I'm measuring the railroad tracks is I know that railroad tracks are four feet eight and a half inches wide from rail to rail. So if I measure this out with a ruler I see that it is three sixteenths of an inch between those two railroad tracks. Now I'm going to take and go back to my building right here and I'm going to measure this front wall that I'm interested in. That's this wall on Wall of Chuck and I'm probably pronouncing that terribly wrong but that's okay it doesn't matter. And that building is three inches and seven sixteenths. So what I want to do is I want to take and divide that up. So I have um, just doing some simple math on my old calculator here. So I'm going to end up with 18 and one third of 3 sixteenths of an inch. So I take the total length of it and I divide it out so that I come out with how many 3 sixteenths there are in my measurement. I then take that total number of 3 sixteenths and I multiply it by the, um, I'm going to convert the 4 foot 8 and a half inches into actual inches. 
So that's going to be 48 plus 8, making it 56 and a half inches. So I'm going to take that 18 and a third, and I'm going to multiply it by 56 and a half inches. And my building is a total of 1,035.8 inches. So we'll call it just a simple 135 inches. I'm going to then divide that by 12. And my building is roughly is roughly 86 and 3 inches. So I now want to take that build that measurement 86 and a third inches and I'm going to take that and divide that by 87 and I'm going to come up with roughly a one foot long building. So as I said earlier my building was my footprint I had was 15 I want 15 inches by 8 inches and then I'm going to add a viaduct into there so easily this building will fit into that measurement now the other side of the building is also it's almost a perfectly square building if I remember right now it's a little longer it's four and a half inches so I've it's a very large building so it's about 86 by 100 feet and I'm only modeling the 86 inch the 86 foot portion of it so I will build my drawings proportionally to that size right there so I now have a footprint of the building which is roughly 86 feet and I am um, by roughly a hundred feet and we're not modeling that whole hundred feet remember I'm only going eight inches back no more than eight inches back so now we'll take that with our drawings that we have right here and we will begin to build the building so if you take a look at this building I'm going to work with the old building the most you can see that I have a window here the three freight doors another window and another door and this door appears to be on the ground level now we can confirm that by simply looking at Google and dropping a person here and we can see if that is the case I don't remember and because I know I have to change my drawing already no it's up at the same level so those doors the loading dock doors and everything are all at the upper level so let's take our building here and we're gonna take a look at it right here now if you can see right away I've got some problems I got the door in the wrong place and the window on the wrong side but everything else is fine and this level right here is going is the same level so I have my freight doors and everything here now we're gonna take and move my brick texture which will be another video altogether take this whoop take this brick texture and we just move it out of the way this is my drawing and you can see I basically will take this drawing and to begin doing this I'm gonna actually measure this out so I like to work in millimeters so I'm gonna start with my basic measurements and I would just simply just take this and measure it out and make the conversion and begin the process of drawing this out and matching everything I want to to give you a hint of some of the things that you can do so the blue lines are guidelines this blue line right here is nothing more than this brick well band that you see and it'll be better if we look at the color this brick this cement piece right here that goes the between the first floor and the second floor that's what that guide is right there then in between here are the openings that do not get the windows and I am showing those because if you notice on these three middle ones and on this side here you can see there's there's uh, four of them it looks like one two three four maybe a fifth one so there's one that doesn't have any 
there's a band coming down. That's what I'm looking at. So it looks like from this corner to this corner, there's no band. There's no band here, but there is one there. There's no band. There's a band here, a band here, a band here. It uh, looks like a band here, but none back there. So what I want to do when I'm building these, this building and making my drawings, I need to re reference these type of things. So if you look at my, my drawing, you can see I've got the bands all into here. So three of these, one, two, three, have a bump out on the brick that I need to, to add to it. The other thing, I have a line on the top, and that is because if you look at this image, I've got a little bump out on the top up here. I'm not sure exactly how this works. I'm not sure if this is a band or if this is all one solid piece coming down. And then I have all the 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 nice fancy design work that's up on top that I've got to build too. So doing that, I've kind of got this line in here and I'm going to make a decision eventually. I'm thinking I'm just going to bump this whole top off and kind of make it work together. A, it'll be easier to model and most people won't catch or won't notice the difference if that is just a band that's up there. But I'm not sure. So we're going to leave it that way and we'll probably run it with that method up there at the top. The other thing that I'm going to do is I want to make sure that all my pilings and all here in between here measure out exactly to the size I want to. Now, I know that the building is 86 inches wide. These windows, I'm taking a real wild guess. There's no other way to do it. I can't tell how wide these windows are. I can have a guesstimate based on certain things. For instance, the size of a freight door. I might be able to take an image from Google um, right here and get an idea. If I had somebody that was there and they could go down and measure it for me, I'd be able to pick it out exactly how big it is. But I'm looking at these windows up here versus the windows that I have from the drawings, and I can tell you they are not the same. See how wide the sashes are and everything else, where from the image on the Google, we can tell these are all metal. And these ones from the original drawing, whoop, we don't need to start that program, are actually wood. So there are some things that you have to guess and you have to take an idea of what you're dealing with, but this isn't an, an example of what I'm talking about when I say, well, we can take some ideas and from the images we can create I'm going to close this up because we don't need this open. Okay. So we can take that. Cancel. Okay, so we can take these drawings and just basically work from them to create the image of my building. So the blue lines are nothing more than guidelines. Now the other thing I have to do is I have to try and get these things lined up. And you can see my door and my windows are reversed. So one of the things I can do is I can take, so I've got this whole image graph grouped as one. I'm going to ungroup it right now. I can take this and this and group this together. And basically what I want to do is I want to draw a line that comes from the center of this. So I'm going to go just like this again. I'm trying to think of an easy way to do this. Whoop, undo that, please. Okay, this will work fine. So I can take this. And I'm going to draw from midpoint to midpoint. And then I'm going to draw from this center line. Oh. I want you to draw a line. And I want to go all the way up to here. Now I'm going to take this line and I'm going to put it in the center. There we go. That's in the center. So now the next question I have is these are windows and these are doors. So the door bottoms have to match straight across here. 
So I'm going to draw a perfectly perpendicular line there. And now I can take this window and this window and I can move it to the center of this and that'll match up with the lines up above and then I can grab this one here and move it to the center there which will get me whoop. but it's a little high so I'm going to take this right here and bring it down to that door and now that's all set up and I can delete this line and delete this line and now my building matches exactly the way it looks from the photographs and everything we have and that's how we basically draw that out now doing it from photographs is a little tougher than doing it from say something more easier so let's take the Sears plan Many of you guys have heard me talk about the Sears archives. This is the Sears archive page. This is really a lot about just about Sears, but one of the most interesting thing is they have historical homes. And you can go into here and you can see images of historical homes. And we're going to I'm modeling a time period and I want to pretty much focus on phones uh, homes from 1933 to 1940, but you can see that there are homes as early as 1908. Now Sears sold over 75,000 of these homes across the United States and they basically sold you a complete kit. So you would mail order these homes, you would get these images that you see right here and I'll show you, I'll click into one here in just a minute. But you would find the home that you want you would then go to Sears and buy it from them. And what Sears would do is make this just like, just like we do laser wood kits that you buy today. In there is all the lumber that you need, all color coded and read in the plans, and all the hardware and all the windows, and everything was loaded into a railroad card and then shipped to you. And it would go to the railroad nearest to where the, that you designated it to go to. And then you would, it would sit on a siding and you literally would unload the railroad car piece by piece to, uh, to, your, to take all the wood and hardware and everything to your build site and then you would then build it. So I'm going to, if you click into these, you can see they, they come up with a description of everything and a lot of the plans. They have all the sizes and everything that are in here if, if it's available. But what I'm going to do is pull up one that I'm working on. This is one that I'm working on building right now. And you can see from the plans here. So they, they gave, a, a, this is actually a page from the Sears and Roebuck uh, catalog. And you can see that it's giving you all the information about it. They give you some options that you might have on to there that, that you can add on to it. The big thing for modelers that we get is we have the size of the rooms the size of the footprints and everything we need to draw these plants and we have a rendering drawing of what this house should basically look like so if you take a look at my pages here you'll see this is the back of the house which in this case happens to be the side that's going to be facing the front of the layout so you can see there's two windows here there's a door there's two more windows here and another window well let's take a look at that plan and if you look at the back of the house here that is literally what you're looking at. So the living room and dining room here, there's the two windows right there. There's the door that's going out to the stoop. There's the two windows in the kitchen. And then this back bedroom has a window right there. And that is absolutely duplicating what we're seeing right here. This is the side of the dining room, living room. You have two windows here and there is a chimney that's located right here. And if you look at the plan, there's the two windows and the chimney right there. So I have a lot of great pieces of information. This is probably one of the easiest ways to build one of these laser buildings because somebody's given me a drawing of what it looks like. I can see that there was a basement put underneath it. There's brick, looks like cinder block maybe or something like that on the bottom of it there. There's brick here on the, on the uh, 
on the side of the house. And again, the, you, you would basically go through and build all this and, and draw this all out. And that's exactly what we got right here. So this is the front door and the two windows. And if you take a look at the front door here, you can see the front door is right here in these two windows. But if you look down in the plans, you can see that here's the door and there's a reception room right here. And there's a little side nook panels right here as the door is recessed into that building there. And if you take a look at it, there's my two panels in my front door all going into there. So that's how I basically go about drawing all this stuff. So um, that's going to be the video on, on basically drawing and, and putting buildings together. And then in the next building, we're going to talk about um, what the red lines are versus green lines versus you know blue lines. I talked a little bit about them. But the other thing that's really critical is the brickwork and how we go about doing some of this type of stuff. So until the uh, next video, I hope this is helpful and I hope you enjoy it. And we will talk to you later. Till then, happy modeling.